Okay, now in this fifth video um, in the series, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what CSS actually is. So, um, what we do know is that we're going to start with this HTML file here, and we're going to use CSS to create this design here. What we do know here also is that um, I'm going to give you basically all all the files that you need. All right. And what we also know is um, what we also know is I'm going to give you uh, the, the the HTML file. And what we're going to do is um, when looking at that HTML file, we know that it's already linked to a style sheet right here. In this line here, style sheet CSS okay, is looking for that file. And we know that we're not going to touch anything in here. You're not allowed. We're not allowed to touch anything in here. And what we are going to do is we're going to create this file here, all right. So all that thing, all that is a given, and we know we're going to end up with this. But what is CSS? What is the purpose of CSS? Why is it? Why is it useful? So I think this is before we start the actual uh, get to the lesson. It's a good idea to discuss uh, exactly, you know, uh, what um, what uh, what is the purpose of CSS? So you that so that you understand it. So you know so that you know why we're learning it or you know why I'm teaching it to you I guess the first thing is CSS and HTML goes hand in hand any any professional or semi professional web design will always include CSS it is huge it's 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 everywhere all right it's it's almost a must have and I've said this all year and I'll I'll, 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 I'll I always say this is it's another one of those things that you know if you if you can say that you know how to do some CSS uh, it could help to separate you from the pack so here you here you are, graduating from the Solder School of Business, um, with two hundred other grads, and that's just at and that's just at, at one university. Multiply that from all the universities who graduate at the same time as you. How how are you going to, you know, to um, separate away from the pack? You know, whatever skill, whatever whatever uh, uh, whatever skill that you can pick up, the more an organization, a company sees in you potential uh, and skill and existing skill the more interested they are in hiring you given that any employer wants to you know wants to obtain as much skill and potential as possible from their employees right so this is another thing to to help you along with it and also it's, it's really cool and it's very interesting so what is CSS this is how CSS works. So what we have here is we have an HTML page and we have a separate CSS page. What that looks like here is we have an HTML page and it's linked, okay, to uh, one single CSS page. All right. What that looks like in the folder is it looks like this. All right. So here's my HTML page and here's my CSS page. All right. So what happens is here's your computer when you browse an HTML file, the HTML file is linked to the CSS file. And the CSS file defines things like font size, font type, um, font spacing, letter spacing, line spacing, where the image is located. You know, is the image rotated? Is it is it is it uh, zoomed in or zoomed out? Where the videos are located? Um, how the pic how the text wraps around the picture? The size of the tables? Where the text boxes are? All that kind of stuff. It's all defined in CSS. Now, of course, what we can do is we can have many different files. Uh, associated with the same CSS. So when, when the desktop computer one is browsing a file, okay, all these files are linked to the same CSS, the same CSS uh, file. So one change in the CSS file could affect every single file that's attached to it. So let's just take a look at an example here, okay? In here, let's go to eBay.com. eBay.com. No, eBay. Com. So we here here we have at any one given time about twenty to thirty million uh, items that are for sale. Okay, let's look up guitars, all right, and let's look up uh, oh, sure why not Taylor. Okay, so the CSS is going to define where this picture is. It's going to define um, it's going to define where the logo sits at the top right corner. How the how long the search bar is, where it is, the font, the font spacing, the font type. It's going to define um, the ads, all this kind of stuff. Now, if you were the eBay designer, all 20 million web pages 
one web page per item is going to is going to come back to the uh, CSS design. So all these 10, 20 million, 30 million web pages all look to the CSS file to define every piece of style, design, font, and color, and location. Okay, of this of this uh, document. Now, if I wanted to change the eBay logo so it it doesn't appear here, but it appears over here, and the search bar gets pushed right to this edge here, I can do that by simply changing probably one line in my CSS. So you change one line in my CSS, that affects the design for 10 million pages. All right now, let's multiply that even more. Let's go to Facebook. All right, so Facebook, a billion users. All right, so forget about 30 million. So we have a billion web pages, one web page per user, all tied to the same CSS file. One change in the CSS file, and we could change the Facebook uh, theme color from uh, blue to uh, green. Okay, and effect have that effect 10 a, a billion pages. Can you imagine without CSS if the design is in every one of those billion pages and you want to change the color from Facebook blue to green? You would have to open and edit a billion web pages. You would need an army of people to get that done. Instead, you open up a tiny little text file, a tiny little text file, okay, and you change one little line on it, okay, called color, all right, and you change the theme color the theme color of Facebook blue to green okay and all those billion pages would refer back to the CSS the one CSS file to to look at to, to for that information so when a new user signs up they create a page for it it looks back into the same CSS file as everyone else okay that's how CSS works now CSS gets even fancier than that what I can do is if I have a desktop computer browsing the HTML document referring to a CSS file, I can have the same HTML documents, right? Um, the same HTML documents refer to a different CSS file if the ta if a tablet, like an iPad, is browsing those HTML pages. So we have the same HTML pages here, okay? With the same HTML pages, but the, the pages can detect what kind of computer and what screen size is is uh, is uh, browsing that page so if it detects that it's a tablet with a small screen it says okay don't use the desktop CSS file use a tablet CSS file right and the desktop okay can continue to browse the same HTML pages all right but use the desktop CSS because using a language called JavaScript we can detect whether it's a desktop a tablet or okay or a cell phone so in the case of a cell phone, right? So the cell phone is browsing the same pages, right? But it, the the web page detects that it's a cell phone that's browsing it, so it uses the cell phone CSS. It loads the cell phone CSS and not the tablet CSS, okay? And not the desktop CSS. So the same content can be formatted to all of these different devices, and then we could and for each device we could have it go to a desktop if it's a desktop computer tablet if it's a tablet and a cell phone CSS for a cell phone right so the the coding would be you know if cell phone then load this file if tablet then load this file if it's a desktop then load that file all right that's the power of CSS without having to design three different websites all right we just have three different CSS files three tiny little files all right and uh, use it for the same set of information and just reformat the data so it, it's it's visible and the user gets a, a nice and user-friendly experience using a cell phone a good user-friendly experience using a tablet and a good user-friendly experience using a desktop all all by changing the CSS file all right so in the case of the file here we wouldn't have one style CSS we have one called style underscore desktop dot CSS for the desktop computers okay sorry for the desktop computers we have style underscore tablet all right for the tablet computers for this file here okay and then we have style underscore cell phone all right 
for the uh, cell phone CSS, keeping the same the same pages, all right, without having to make duplicate pages, without having to design three different pages for three different types of devices. That's the power of CSS, all right. But again, if you re if you remember what we talked about in the uh, intro here, okay, well we need HTML to de to define what content is is displayed. CSS defines how the content is styled and JavaScript does things like JavaScript is the technology that is able to tell us whether it's a desktop, a tablet, or a cell phone that's browsing the web page, right? And you can't have that technology. No one no one pro no one of these technology will offer all three of them. You have to use all five. And that's that's what programming is like these days, you know, just just the way of life. So we're focusing on CSS. Okay, that's the end of this video. Now what I want you to do is I want you to write me an email. If you're a student in my class, I want you to write me an email. I want you to summarize the information, um, what you learned in this video. And then I want you to uh, I want you to ask two questions, two things that you don't understand about this, uh, this information. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.